Alrighty, friendos, welcome in. So today's video is gonna be a guide on how to do all the objectives in Phasmophobia. It's gonna be pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna play a bunch of games, go through how to do all the objectives. Um, I am playing on nightmare mode, but obviously all these objectives can be completed on any difficulty. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Uh, I, right now I have pull the ghost of the smudge stick, cleanse area near the ghost using a smudge stick and get average sanity below 25%. So to get my average sanity below 25%, I can't really see my sanity on nightmare, but you just sit in the dark. Sit in the dark, or you can use a curse possession, which I will show you how to do that. Curse possessions do use your sanity, um, so you can use a curse possession to lower your sanity. And by lowering our sanity, we'll also get the ghost to hunt, so we can repel the ghost with a smudge stick while it's chasing us. Um, the cleanse the area of the uh, ghost using a smudge stick, you don't have to do that during a hunt, but you can also do that during a hunt. Uh, just smudge the ghost when it's, like, right next to you. But you can also complete this objective. It, just go into the ghost room and just smudge the room. So let's go ahead and go inside and we will do these objectives. Okay, so like I said, all the cursed possessions will lower your sanity. Um, the voodoo doll is the one cursed possession that doesn't lower your sanity by much. I believe it's 5% per pin that you pull. So that one's kind of no bueno for lowering your sanity. Let's see, we actually might have that. Oh, we don't. Okay, we have the summoning circle. Summoning circle is really good for lowering your sanity. I believe you lower your sanity by 15% for every candle that you light. So something you can do with the summoning circle is you can light uh, four candles to leave the last one unlit and lower your sanity just enough to where the ghost will hunt you without getting a cursed hunt. Because remember, cursed hunts have a slightly shorter grace period. The grace period being the time between when the ghost starts a hunt to where it actually starts moving and can kill you. Um, so that's why, and cursed hunts are also a little bit longer. So that's why sometimes you might want to not have cursed hunts. Because once you use a cursed object and a ghost hunts because of that cursed object, you'll have cursed hunts for the rest of the game. So sometimes I just like to lower my sanity enough to get hunted without the cursed hunt. But the summoning circle can be a good way to get the ghost picture. So we just lit all those candles. Our sanity should be low. I'm not gonna do the math right now. And um, we should, should be low enough to get hunted right now. Okay, yeah, the ghost is hunting now. So then what I'm gonna do, oh, we have a hiding spot right there, okay. I'm just gonna stand out here. So we're gonna get two objectives done in one go with just one smudge stick right here. If this ghost even makes it upstairs. Here, ghosty. Here they come. She you coming. All right. So as long as the ghost is in the room with you like this, you can smudge it. So I'm repelling the ghost. And then for the, um, actually no, I should have gotten the, yep, see, both objectives just got done with one smudge take, one hunt. Easy peasy. So that's all three objectives done. Like I said, you can lower your sanity just by sitting in the dark. Uh, make sure you don't have any candles nearby you because candles will keep your sanity from trading. So easy peasy. But say you have the cleanse the area near the ghost objective and you don't want to get the ghost to hunt. Sorry, this one. Um, say the kitchen is the ghost room. You would just use a smudge stick in this room. That's all you have to do for that. And then you know if you did it because it would check it off. Um, I mean, there's also a slight chance maybe the ghost wandered out of the room. So you might not get the objective, but if the ghost does a ghost event or if it like throws something, you know the ghost is right there or if you have motion sensors. So you know for sure that you are cleansing the area near the ghost. All right, let's do some more objectives. All right, so awesome. We got three new objectives this time. We have have a member escape, uh, sorry, have a member of your team witness a ghost event, find evidence of the paranormal the EMF and get a ghost to split a candle. Um, all fairly easy. Hopefully we don't get a shade because if you have a shade, trying to witness a ghost event could be annoying, but otherwise the ghost should be pretty active. Candles actually spawn on most maps. So what I might do, just so I don't have to bring in a candle, is I'm gonna grab a candle from inside and we will just use the candle inside the house. So I actually just noticed we have a music box. The music box causes the ghost to do a ghost event whenever you use it near the ghost room. So that is gonna be an easy way to get the um, event if you don't if you don't wanna sit around and wait for the ghost to just event on you. Um, you could use that. The uh, If there are tarot cards, you could also pull those. A devil card will give you a ghost event. I'm not 100% sure, but I think the summoning circle event might also count as an event. Um, those are the only objectives that will just, or sorry, the only cursed items that will just straight up give you a ghost event. So to get an EMF reading, super easy. Just if the ghost touches the door, throws an object, uh, you can get, there we go. You just touch this door. Boom, look at that. Objective done. That's actually a super easy objective. You can also get EMF readings off of a ghost event. So if the ghost is a ghost event, you can like, you have to like sometimes find like the origin of the event. Uh, you can get like EMF reading four off that. And then the candle, at least on Willow Street, there's one right here. So I'm gonna guess the ghost is like about here. You just wanna put candles near the ghost room. 
and they'll, they'll eventually blow it out. You don't even have to be in the house to get this objective done. You could just fill the area with candles and then leave, and I'm pretty sure the ghost will eventually blow out a candle. I'm gonna try to get this ghost to do a ghost event without the music box first, just so I can show you how to do it in case you don't have a music box or a curse possession that can help you with a, uh, a ghost event. But basically, to get the ghost to ghost event, granted it's an active ghost, AKA not a shade. You just gotta sit there and piss it off. <laughs> you just gotta talk to it, ask it to give you a sign. Maybe the, the lower your sanity, the more likely the ghost is to do ghost events. So maybe try to sit in the dark. Maybe use the curse possession just to lower your sanity just a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna sit in here. I think actually, yep, already blew out the candle. Perfect. Give us a sign. Show yourself. I don't even say their name. Raymond Nilsson. Did I say that right? Raymond Nilsson, give us a sign. Show yourself. Give us a sign. Show yourself. Oh, okay. Well, that was a sign. Not the sign I'm looking for, though. And sometimes it can take you while. Well. Sometimes ghosts don't want a ghost event right away. Sometimes they'll ghost event as soon as you walk in the house. It's just sometimes it's RNG whether or not they do. Like I said, shades are super inactive, and there's a chance you may not be able to get a ghost event from them. Did that- Wait, that bunny just disappeared. Where did it go? Hello? It went all the way over here? I didn't know that- can the ghost do that? Can the ghost teleport items? This bunny is holy now. I'm bringing this back. I'm putting it back where I found it. So if you're trying to get the ghost to do a ghost event and you're worried about getting hunted, um, with some things you can do, you can put on crucifixes, right, to prevent the hunt. Um, granted, if the ghost steps outside out of the range, it might still hunt. Uh, but you also have a smudge stick um, to protect yourself. So if you have crucifixes and a smudge stick, you shouldn't have to worry. You can just smudge stick, run away, or the crucifix will just prevent a hunt altogether. Raymond Nilsson, give us a sign. So yeah, right now I'm just trying to lower my sanity so the ghost gets a little bit more active. I'm just talking to it, asking me to give it a give up, give me a s oh, there you go. Jesus. <laughs> okay, well there's a ghost event for you. I was so not ready for that. Um, and I knew that was a ghost event, of course, because it's a it touched the door and the footsteps immediately started walking. So I knew that wasn't a hunt. Also, this crucifix is definitely what prevented a hunt, so yeah. It's really just that simple. You just have to. I, I, I didn't even wasn't even talking to it. I didn't even have my push to talk on. I just, I guess my sanity was low enough for it to just event on me. So sometimes it's just about waiting around, getting the ghost to just do an event when it wants to. Um, let me go and take some sanity pills, and I'll show you how to use the music box to get a ghost event. But assuming you don't want to wait around for a ghost event like that, um, you can use the music box to get that done as well. Yeah, you want to make sure that you're using the music box when your sanity. Uh, you have a decent amount of sanity because if you use your the music box when your sanity is very low, it'll just immediately shut and the ghost will just start hunting. So you want to make sure you use it either early on or after you've taken some sanity pills. So the music box, you want to start it not close to the room. If you start the music box right in the ghost room, um, if the ghost is really close to the music box when you start it, it'll immediately shut and start a hunt. So you kind of want to start it far away. All right. And when the ghost starts walking like that, that's the ghost event, and you want to make sure then you flee. I think it might be a... Oh, it's a Dio. Okay. <laughs> hey there, buddy. I get so many Dio's whenever I'm recording tutorials. It's funny. Makes it easier. Okay. But yeah, that's how you use the music box to get a ghost event. Also a great time to get a picture if you need to. Alright, we've already done the EMF reader objective, but now we have the detective paranormal sound with the parabolic mic and detect a uh, ghost presence with motion sensor, both super easy to do. Uh, you just wanna take, for the motion sensor objective, you just wanna put a motion sensor near the ghost room and it's gonna eventually walk through it. Um, another thing you can do if the ghost is just for some reason not, not walking past your motion sensor is you can get the ghost to hunt and then just have it walk by the motion sensor and that it'll activate it. It can activate it during a hunt as well. You we actually use the parabolic mic right now possibly to figure out where this ghost is. Oh, okay. Well, it already activated the motion sensor, so we know it's around here. Um, we're looking for the purple mic objective. You're going to want to look when you're getting... I had it for a second. You're going to try to get a reading somewhere between like 0.4 and like 0.8. Oh, we actually, I think we just got it. You hear that footstep? Yeah, so you just heard a footstep. You want to look near the ghost room. So I'm assuming maybe this hallway right here is the ghost room. Uh, you just don't... Just look at it. All you have to do is just look at the room and you'll eventually hear like maybe a footstep, a whisper, what have you. Um, and it actually the parabolic mic has a crazy range on it too. So you don't even have to be that close to the ghost room. You could like sit near a hiding spot 
and use the prebog mic. You don't have to be right in the ghost room, but being a little bit closer might help you get it faster. But you can also, yeah, but the prebog mic you can also use to find the ghost room. Because as you see, we're getting a 0 0.7 reading looking right the hallway. That means this is the ghost room. You'll usually get a reading somewhere between like maybe 0.4 or 0.8. That means you're just like looking at the ghost room. So we've already done these two objectives, but now we have capture a photo of the ghost. Um, there's a few ways you can go about doing this. You can um, sit around near the ghost room and hope that the ghost is a ghost event on you. Uh, you can try to get the picture during a hunt, which is probably the most challenging way. Or you can use a cursed item to get the photo, which really is just depends on RNG on what you get as the cursed item. Dang, it looks like we have a voodoo doll as our cursed possession. So we're not gonna be able to get the ghost photo with that, unfortunately. Um, we could use this to get the ghost to hunt. Uh, I'm not gonna do that yet though. I will show you how to get the, oh, look at the bone. Uh, <laughs> I will show you how to get a picture during a hunt, but we'll try to do the easier ways first. Um, so yeah, uh, to get a ghost photo, you can just hang around the ghost room and wait for the ghost to do an event. Um, if you had a music box, tarot cards, or a summoning circle, you could use those to get a picture. The summoning circle, when you light all the candles, the ghost is a ghost event, and that gives you time to take a picture. Music box, I just showed you, does a ghost event. And then tarot cards, you have a chance of getting a devil card, which causes a ghost event to happen and get a picture. Sometimes the ghost events are air balls. So again, the, the tarot cards are just gonna come down to luck. So I'm just gonna hang around the ghost room and see if the ghost do a ghost event so I can get a picture. Kind of similar to um, the previous game where we had to get the ghost to do a ghost event. Just kind of sit around, let your sanity drop a little bit. Maybe try to talk to the ghost, piss it off. This thing threw the cock on the truck. What the heck? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Give us a sign. Show yourself. There you go. You want to make sure to get the picture. You don't get too close to the ghost. Because if you get too close, the ghost event's going to go away. So try to stand a little bit far away. I mean, you have to be decently close to get a three-star picture. But you also don't want to get inside the ghost because, as you saw, the ghost event will go away. So yeah, I was just sitting in the dark, kind of asking it to show itself. Give me a sign. I was saying its name and it eventually manifested. So that's the easiest way to get the picture. Besides, I mean, cursed items are very easy, but they have the risk of the ghost hunting. So you just kind of sit around and wait for the ghost to appear. Easy peasy. So now I will show you how to get the ghost picture during a hunt. So the capture the picture of the ghost objective, you can actually get when you have the journal full. So say you have all 10 pictures of three star things of other stuff. You can actually still get the objective done as long as you have a third camera. Um, you'll know if you get it done because you'll just snap pictures and it'll check it off. So if you're like, oh no, the journal's full, I still have this objective. Well, you can still get it done as long as you have another camera with pictures on it. Now we already got the ghost photo, so I'm not gonna be able to see 100% if I get it during this hunt, but um, I'll just show you how I normally do it whenever the ghost is hunting. So I usually, um, in my hands, I have a smudge stick, a lighter, and a camera. Uh, I'm gonna turn the power on so that we can see. You can also do this with a friend. If you have a friend that has a smudge stick and then you have the camera, um, you can just snap a bunch of pictures and they can smudge for you. But if you're solo, this is how I'd recommend doing it. So I'm gonna use the cursed possession to get this thing to hunt me. And I do have a fresh camera just to ensure that we can get the picture. Also, always know where your hiding spot is when, when you're gonna get the ghost to hunt. Actually, I'll show you what I'm, I'm gonna try to do. This may be risky, I may die doing this, but this island here actually breaks line of sight. So you can actually crouch down and lose LOS with the ghost. So I think I might just do that instead of trying to run away and die. I'm just gonna pull the pins until it hunts me. She's <laughs> throwing so many things. There we go, okay, it's hunting now. All right, so as soon as you see those, just start spamming right click. And hopefully one of those counts. Oh, Jesus. All right, and I'm going to smudge. Stay crouched right here. And just keep track of the ghost. Make sure it doesn't come around the island. But yeah, this actually is a hiding spot, kind of. As long as the ghost isn't, if a ghost comes around the corner, make sure you keep an eye on it. See, like that. It almost saw me. All right, so I think one of the, one or two of these pictures definitely would have counted. You can definitely clearly see the ghost in these pictures. Oh, that was a good one. So yeah, I usually just spam right click. Because uh, trying to time exactly. I'm gonna get out of here so we stop here in this car. Trying to time exactly when the ghost is like visible so you can get a picture. I'm not good at that. So I usually just spam right click until I get the picture. Yeah, that's how you get a picture of a ghost. So now we have, have a member of your team escape the ghost during a hunt and prevent the ghost from hunting with a crucifix. 
Uh, let's go and talk about the crucifix objective. So to get the crucifix objective done, you're just going to place crucifixes near the ghost room. Uh, this one can be a little bit tricky because if the ghost chooses to like wander away from the ghost room and hunt outside the range of crucifixes, it's going to seem like the crucifixes aren't working and like the objective is hopeless. But sometimes it takes a little bit of trial and error. If you're on a big map or like say Camp Woodwind where it's really hard to tell where the ghost room is, this objective can be particularly frustrating. But every time it hunts, you can just kind of keep note of where it's hunting from and try to put a crucifix near there. So it looks like this ghost is in the basement. I'm going to try to use the thermometer to like more accurately pinpoint which room is actually its room. All right, so <laughs> very clearly this is its room because it's freezing in here. So I'm going to set up crucifixes in this room. Um, if you didn't know, you could put crucifixes down. If you press and hold F, it shows the range of the crucifix. So I'm just going to try to put it down so that it covers the whole range of the room. All right, and then I'm just going to put another crucifix maybe out here just to kind of protect this area in case it happens to wander out. Now there is a chance it might wander like over here and choose to hunt, or maybe it'll wander over here and choose to hunt, in which case the crucifix won't protect you. And then maybe at that point you'll want to move the crucifix. But let's see if this ghost will comply and use the crucifix near the ghost room. In order for this objective to work as well, you have to make sure your sanity is low enough in order for the ghost to hunt. So if you just started the game, you put crucifixes down, you're like, why isn't this working? Well, your sanity just isn't low enough for it to actually hunt you. Another ghost you may have to watch out for when you're doing this crucifix objective is a shade. So shades will not hunt when you're in the same room as them. So if it is a shade and it's, well, there we go. If it's not using the crucifix, you might need to step out of the room for it to use the crucifix. Okay, so as you can see, this ghost just used the crucifix. I did step out of the room because I wasn't sure if it was a shade or not, but that's all you gotta do. Just put the crucifix in the room, make sure your sanity is low enough. You can sit in the dark to drop your sanity, use a cursed item, and it'll eventually use it. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of these crucifixes and we will talk about how to escape the ghost during the hunt. Um, the easiest way to do it is going to be to use a smudge stick. Just kind of did what I did with them where I took the picture of the ghost, but without taking the picture, you can just loop it, smudge it, and you'll escape the hunt. Uh, one thing you have to keep in mind is that if anybody at any point dies during that hunt, like even if you smudge it and successfully get away, but one of your friends dies, somebody you're playing with dies, that objective will not get done. So you'll then have to get the ghost to hunt again and uh, wash, rinse, repeat. All right, so the ghost is hunting. I'm just gonna get it to come up here. Ghosty, yoo-hoo. They're coming. All right. Then I'm just gonna smudge it. We'll blind it or it's gonna follow my every move because uh, this game hates me i'm kidding <laughs> and this objective will only get done once the hunt ends as you see right now even though i escaped the ghost okay well the hunt just ended right as i said that but the objective does not get done until the hunt ends and everyone has survived and the ghost has to have line of sight with you for that objective to get done so you, you'll have to like it actually like aggro you and see you. I mean, you can definitely do this without a smudge stick as long as it sees you and then you just break line of sight and hide. But easiest way to do it is just, just get a smudge stick, have it actually like chase you for a second and then smudge it. That's all you gotta do. And that's it. That's how you complete all the objectives in Phasmophobia. If you have any questions, definitely comment down below. I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, drop it a like. If you love it, drop me a sub. Good luck ghost hunting and I'll see you in the next one.